Hello, 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 hello. How are you all doing? Nice to have you with us, no matter where you are in the world. We've got people from the UK. That's me and him. He's not from the UK, but he's in the UK. And then we've got these, these American chaps down here. Um, but it's episode number 267 of This Week in WordPress. We've got loads to talk about. Actually, way more than normal. Normally, there's about six or seven pieces that we drone on about. But this time, we've probably got about 10 or 12. Lots and lots to talk about. But let's have a little bit of an introduction to everybody. First of all, let's start top right, my top right. Anyway, Cameron Jones, how are you doing, mate? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. Cameron's got a fabulous T-shirt on. Um, I don't know if he wants to show it, but look, go on. This is great. This <laughs> is my code. Look at that. That's so good. <laughs> this is my coding shirt, says Cameron. Yeah, nice to have you with us. Cameron's been in the UK for the last period of time. I guess over the summer, right? The whole summer? Yeah, so I got here in the middle of April, so I've been here about five months or so. And it's time to leave. And uh, you were saying just before we hit record that you kind of feel like this is normal now. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> you have to go back and readjust. Yeah, like it hasn't been a holiday. I've been, still been working full time yeah. while I've been over here, just experiencing life in a different country. Well, and yeah. Yeah, hoping well, to get you. summer all year round, but England. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That you had, yeah, you'll have three summers in a row. That's great. Um, Cameron Jones is a professional WordPress developer from the little beach town of Victor Harbour in Australia. He's the founder of the premium plugin store, Mongoose Marketplace. He's best known for the Mongoose page plugin used by more than 30,000 WordPress websites. He's a member of the, sorry, he's also the maintainer of the official WordPress plugin for the free donation platform, Kofi. Uh, he has contributed patches to several major plugins, such as ACF and Jetpack, and as well as having spent nearly a decade building sites with WordPress and products for WordPress, Cameron has spent time as a meetup uh, and WordCamp organizer, contributed to WordPress Core. But away from the laptop, you can often find him on the sports field, at the dance class, or at the mosh pit <laughs> of a heavy metal concert. Did you get to do a bit of that, like the music scene in the UK? Have you been managing to attend some of that stuff as well? Yeah, I've gone to three concerts while I've been here. Nice. Uh, I've got tickets to a concert in the States for two weeks' time as well. So, yeah. And then I've got a few more back home that I've already got tickets for. So, oh, wow. Yeah, they keep me busy with the music. Nice. You can see by Cameron's little strap line on his, uh, on there, you know, where he's got his name written, that he's also speaking at the Page Builder Summit. There is no way that I'm not going to mention the Page Builder Summit this episode. In fact, I am going to drill the Page Builder Summit for everything that it's worth. For example, <laughs> this graphic might appear from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> Subtle. <laughs> and also, I might just inject this video periodically. <laughs> so beware. Doesn't matter when you're talking, you might get overwritten by the Page Builder Summit stuff. But anyway, thank you. That's next week, Cameron speaking. Uh, so if you do fancy that, page builder, <laughs> pagebuildersummit.com. Uh, go and get your tickets or your free ticket and get yourself on the schedule. That's lovely. Thank you. Rob Cairns. Down there. Indeed. How are you doing, Rob? You all right? Yeah, I'm doing great. And for the record, by the way, I am not an American. I I'm know. I meant to say North America. And as soon as the word America <laughs> exited my lips, I thought, oh, that's not going to go down well. <laughs> no. Okay. How are you, Nathan? Thanks yeah, for I'm having good, me. Good, thanks. Um, Rob is, of course, joining us from Canada. He's the founder, CEO, chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. He's the creator of the SDM Show podcast, which has published 350 episodes. Rob is a WordPress security expert. He's also a community member who moderates the LinkedIn WordPress global community group, which is huge. Um, in his spare time, Rob loves spending time touring around Ontario. Other hobbies Rob enjoys are reading, music, and sports. He sounds like a perfect match for you, Cameron. Uh, he can often be found at a sporting event supporting one of Toronto's many sports teams. Uh, Rob, one quick question. Ontario sure. or Ontario? Ontario. <laughs> tomatoes, tomatoes. Tomato. 
potato, <laughs> potato. <laughs> yeah, potato. I'm, I'm going to tell you a really boring story. Uh, my wife attended, she's a musician, and she once attended uh, an audition of somebody who sang that song, but obviously didn't know that there was a difference in the pronunciation. So literally sang, you say potatoes and I say potatoes. Mm. <laughs> and on it went. <laughs> Just <laughs> anyway, we're also joined by Bod. I, I, Bod, have you been on this show before? I don't remember. Oh, now he's muted. No. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 Bod, Bod has had endless problems with the audio uh, prior to getting on this show. What I'm going to do, Bod, right? What I'm going to do is we'll just leave you there. If you can figure out the audio, just keep talking whilst we carry on. If your audio doesn't come back, refresh it. Go through the whole process of joining the call again. And uh, I'm sure we'll get you back because we did have you. We had you for a little moment there. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll introduce Bod properly anyway. Bod is a longtime WordPress instructor in the New York City area and beyond. He's also very active in the WordPress community. His current work is providing WordPress content for WordPress businesses. What does that mean, Bod? He's obviously asked me a question which I'm supposed to supply to him. So I'm going to ask him, what does that mean, Bod? And uh, we get this horrible silence. <laughs> it's a rhetorical question, perhaps. Okay, if you're joining us, fully appreciate it. If you want to make some comments, I'd really appreciate that. As the show goes on, if you fancy doing that, that really it kind of enlivens the show. It makes it great. Um, but if you want to do that, just a couple of things. First of all, uh, this may be where you're watching at wpbuilds.com forward slash live. If it is, then you'll need to be logged into some Google service because it's YouTube comments. Also, if you want to share the URL, that's the best place to share it, wpbuilds.com forward slash live. If you're in Facebook, you have to go through a little bit of an extra thing. Go to wave.video forward slash lives forward slash Facebook. I suspect that link is embedded in the OP, um, and that will enable you to be de-anonymized, and we'll get to know who you are. We've got a few people popping in to say hi. The first one, as always, uh, we're joined by Peter Ingersoll. Always a pleasure to have Peter. He gives us a weather report every Monday, and today is no different. Good morning. After a weekend of thunderstorms in southern New England, the weather continues to be a bit unsettled. At 9 a.m., it's 21 degrees centigrade, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, under cloudy skies, it says. So thank you, Peter. It's about that here. We're going through a nice warm spell in the UK. Cameron must be delighted. Um, oh, yes. Like, honestly, Cameron, there's never been a year like this year. You've come in the best possible year, so bravo for that. Well, I it's suspect... rained for the last two months. Oh, well, everyone... that bit. No, but... well, you are like four hours away. Yeah, that's true. We've had quite a lot of rain, but we've also had a lot of heat. And normally we yeah. have quite a bit of rain and not much heat. So I think you've, on balance, I'd take it. Yeah. Marcus Burnett, Cameron shirt is great for the job, not so great for a hospital. <laughs> 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 oh. um, hey folks, says Courtney Robertson Mostly back working finally But I have so much to catch up on uh, We all hope that you're well And on the way to feeling much better, Courtney Courtney, I goes without saying I hope you're feeling well as well It does seem that WordCamp US Following on from that event There really has been a deluge of people Catching the, the dreaded corona So uh, hoping that everybody who went Has managed to Stay safe. Uh, Marcus is making some sports comment that I don't understand. I guess Raptors is a sport team. We'll forgive yeah. the hat. I'm a Raptors fan. Okay. Uh, Michelle's joining Thanks. us. Good morning. Thanks. I had my furnace on. Oh, goodness. I had my furnace on last night and my AC on this morning. Welcome to life in Western New York. And I'll be checking out life in Western New York in just a couple of weeks, Michelle. Can't wait to see you there. And she replies, can't wait to see you either, Marcus. That's lovely. Uh, and Cameron. Oh, look! It's honestly the show was made for this, wasn't it? It's like some sort of meetup organization thing. Yes. You can go, you can go and meet Rob. You can go and meet Bod. Now you can go and meet um, various other people as well. I've got Bod coming in on a different stream. Let's see if we can. Let's put Bod on twice. Look at that. That's kind of weird. Oh no! <laughs> God, should we do it? Look, there's. <laughs> <not. laughs> Bod. Bod is on twice. That's got to be the episode title, surely. Okay, we've droned on enough. We need to get on with the WordPressy stuff. So let's do just that. Uh, as I said, 
got quite a lot to cover, so we'll probably touch most things fairly lightly. Um, feel free to interrupt. And Bud, let's hope your mic starts working. I have actually put the second version of you in now. So, um, yeah, let's see if it works. This is us, WPBuilds.com. We are sponsored at the moment by GoDaddy. Sincere thanks to them for helping us keep the lights on over here. Marvellous stuff. You can see also at the bottom there is uh, an opportunity for you to get your free ticket to the Page Builder Summit. As I said, I'm going to blast this message <laughs> throughout the whole of this show. But uh, go to pagebuildersummit.com and click this little button here and you can get your free ticket. It starts on um, it starts on Monday, the 18th of September. So it's basically a week from today. We've got, I know, 38, I think it is, presentations, something like that. Maybe it's a little bit more with the vault speakers thrown in. But yeah, come and join us for that pagebuildersummit.com. First proper news article up this week is Gutenberg 16.6. There's some nice stuff in here. I like this. Gutenberg 16.6 introduces block hooks, improvements to toolbars on nested blocks. Sarah Gooding writes on the 7th of September. So it's coming down the pike. Um, essentially, the, the block hooks bit is really just a renaming um, of something. So I, I'm not entirely sure there's too much in there. But the thing that's of most interest to me is the, the fact that if you interact with nested blocks, at the moment, you've got this real faff of if you accidentally touch on a block and you're not um, keeping everything in the top bar, then the, the toolbar sort of just jumps all over the place. And it's really hard to keep track of. And honestly, there's better ways of doing that. And so now it will always leap to the position of the parent block. So in the future, let's just share this little video if I zoom in. Oh, it's not that one. It's this one here. You can see that. Um, is that the right one? I can't remember. Uh, anyway, the point is it stays in the same place, which is quite nice. So fairly minor things. I don't know if anybody else got anything more out of that piece. I'll just hand it over to you guys. And the answer is no. <laughs> Nobody's got anything to say about that. That's completely fine. So what I'm going to do in that case, I'm going to take this opportunity to, uh, you know, do this. Uh, nobody wanted to say anything, so I might as well shove in a Page Builder Summit advert in case you didn't know that was happening next week. PageBuildersummit.com. It's going to get weary very, very quickly. <laughs> Uh, more times than I'll stop. Anyway, that was over on the WP Tavern. The next piece is all about WordPress 6.4. 6.4 is coming fairly soon. It's got a underrepresented gender release squad. Um, we've talked about that in the past, but there is a nice new way to manage fonts. You'll be able to download your Google fonts and preview everything, as you can see on the screen in a in a handy little font library where it, you know, if you've been to Google fonts, you know this UI. It's exactly the same. You There's a sentence including more or less every letter that's possible, and it shows you what that sentence might look like in a variety of different formats. But it's nice that that library exists in there. Here's some nice new stuff. Three new blocks, some of which you may have imagined probably already should have existed. What's coming is a new table of contents block, which will enable you to just, well, put in the table of contents by, let's hope, just clicking a button, perhaps at the beginning, shove it at the top and what have you, um, presumably based upon headings and things like that. A new time to read block, so you can drop that in um, so that you can give users an idea of how long they're getting into something. And I don't really know what this one even is, but a scrolling marquee block. No idea what that means, but that's something nice. We've got the new 2024 theme, which we talked about last week, which is really going to be quite exceptional in and, uh, scope. And then we've also got uh, the rollback feature is now going to hopefully, um, at the moment, if you update a plugin or something like that and something breaks, WordPress will automatically yeah, roll back. And the intention is that that's going to be extended to automatic updates. So if you automatically update plugins, that's going to uh, going to work as well. So there, anything to add to that? I know you like the table of contents block there, didn't you, Cameron? Yeah, very happy to see the table of contents block. I was looking for it for something just the other day. I'm like, I thought this was already in there, but it, you know, it must just be in the in the plugin or something. So good to see that's coming in. I. Testing wonder about the marquee block. 
Uh, just quickly, uh, Bod, I think we've got you now. I just, think you do? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh -oh. so, that's great. We've got Is you there back. an echo? No, everything yeah. sounds fine. Yeah, we've got you in. All right, but there's so, a delay over here. I'd have to look on that. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, you keep testing. I'm going to mute Nothing you for a moment. Working. Yeah, I'm going to mute you for a minute and we'll let Cameron talk and we'll be back in a sec and check okay. you out again. Back in a sec. Go, Cameron. Sorry about that. Yeah, I do wonder about the marquee block. Like, marquee was a HTML element like 20 years ago and they got rid of it because it wasn't accessible. Like, it's yeah. the thing where things scroll across the screen. So, yeah. are we adding that into WordPress yeah, I don't know. when the W3C got rid of it? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I've heard nothing about it until I Me saw either. that piece. Um, and yes, but that, that brings back memories. I do remember that being a feature and then it's been gotten rid of by the W3C. Can never pronounce that. Um, so yeah, let's see what, what happens there. But, um, the other two ones seem really, really useful. Anything on that, Rob? Um, just that, uh, I saw this past week, there was a call for testing on the font block changes that they're looking for testers. So if you want to help out and help make WordPress better, get involved with that. So, I guess the, the whole font thing would be quite useful for clients. Yeah. In the websites that I always managed, I always kind of knew what the, the fonts available to me were and therefore what they would probably look like. But I guess if you're going to roll this out to clients, it might be quite a, yeah. might be quite useful for clients to be able to have access to that. It, it looks exactly like you'd expect over on Google Fonts yeah. or something like that. And um, WordPress currently doesn't handle uploading fonts well at all. Like there yeah. are some... You know, page builders and stuff like Divi, for example, let you upload fonts, but you can't actually upload properly without adding some filters to fix it. So hopefully that will sort that out as well. Yeah. And that's a, that's a big issue with all the GDPR issues and things like yeah. that. So we need to get, we need to get to Cameron where we have self-loaded fonts in, in yeah. our WordPress install. No question. Quite a few of the themes have taken that on, haven't they? There's a couple of themes yeah. that I've seen recently where there's a uh, there's a toggle and it says basically upload all of your fonts and it does that work silently in the background. You don't really even have to do anything. Um, and it all just works. So, yeah, nice, nice little set of features there. Let's move on. Uh, this is so nice. This is, We're actually showing it. I should probably show it for full, um, full accountability. This is uh, from the repository email. Uh, which is also sponsored by Ready Pro. Look at that. And this is to say that Sarah Gooding, bravo, Sarah. Sarah Gooding has now been working at the WP Tavern for a whole entire decade. Uh, pretty remarkable, really. Um, I don't know how many pieces she's actually penned during that time. But I can tell you, um, having had a look at the WP Tavern um, admin area, because I've got access to that because I've made a podcast over there. There's quite a lot that that she writes that she doesn't think makes it out. You know, she's doing a lot more work than we ever see, but I think she's been doing an absolutely stellar job. Until recently, of course, we had Justin Tadlock uh, helping her out, and together I thought they made an awesome combination. Uh, Justin, as yet, I don't know what the process is and how how if they're interviewing people, but as yet, Justin hasn't been replaced. So Sarah's been doing all of that heavy lifting. Oh, I imagine it's at well over a year now. So, yeah, bravo. I think it's pretty impressive the amount of content that she's been making over the over the last years. She's not, I don't think she's created a piece to sort of say, you know, a sort of self-congratulatory piece or anything like that. But uh, anyway, from me, Sarah, well done for forget stay in the course and keeping us all informed it is generally speaking your articles that make it week in week out onto this show it's the it is the newspaper of record i think uh, i think it's fair to say uh, anything on that guys no just congratulations congrats her her writing is great and it's great for the community so well done I don't know how yeah. she keeps up, actually, because sometimes she's, she's written about a story only moments after it's broken. I, don't know, I say moments, but it's definitely a really short space of time. So, yeah, pretty amazing. Do you, uh, do you read her stuff, Cameron? I do. I don't keep track of everything that Tavern puts out these days, mm. but I know that she um, supplies 90% of the content for this show. So, yeah. Yeah, well yeah. done. Yeah, she really does. It's the, it is the, uh, I, have, I have, in order to create this show, I have an RSS reader, you know, the old, good old fashioned RSS reader. 
and it consumes everything that I've ever come across in the WordPress space. So I sit through quite a lot. There's probably four or 500 things a week. And the WP Tavern is, is as soon as my eye just catches that, the, there's, my default setting is to say, okay, let's, let me at least read that. Some of the other publications, not quite so much. So the fact that she's able to concentrate on that full time and do that as a job um, is pretty, be remarkable so yeah thank you to sarah gooding bud i don't know if you can still hear us hopefully you've unmuted yourself you got i can hear you yeah you got anything to say about sarah but gooding? having the problem of a delay oh i don't know bud i don't so know what you want to do it's point... uh, it's totally up to you if you want to persevere and refresh and try again you can um on the other hand let me do that yeah yeah because yeah. i'm close <laughs> <You're> close. <laughs> if it yeah. doesn't work i'll just Say goodbye. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you yeah. do that. I will just mute you until such times as you're able to join us. Anyway, bravo, Sarah. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Nathan, can we go here. off on a little tangent and talk about your RSS reader? I, yeah. I've got one set up in a Slack channel, so it sends me a message every time. Okay, something comes in. What do you use? So I was using uh, for the longest time. You know, going back a long, long time, I was using Google. What was it called? Google Reader. Google Reader. Google and Reader. then Google did yeah. a Google on yeah, their product it. and just summarily got rid of it. And honestly, I think it was the best solution out there. So I yeah. don't really know what they were thinking. So then I moved over to Feedly, um, and that was what I used for years and years. Very happy with that. I had no grumbles. Until I came across this one called sumi.news. So it's S, it's the, the URL is S U M I dot news, N E W S. And it's the most bare boned, um, no frills RSS reader. So it doesn't bring in the images. You just get the text and you get the first little bit of the excerpt of the text. But also you can throw in things like um, Twitter handles as well so there's a few little extras there and so for me i don't really want to see the featured image in the rss i just want to see what the title is so i go from there and then you can categorize things so i put everything in a wordpress bin if you like and then i log in click the wordpress tab and then all it gives me is uh wordpress stuff and i you know each day there's probably about 100 things i have to scroll through it's kind of nice because it does it by day so it says, you know, yesterday and then Tuesday and then Monday and it goes backwards in time. By the time you get to Sunday, there's usually like two. It's like, oh, I've, I've made it to Sunday finally. It's nice and easy to read. But it's well worth checking out. Sumi.news. I, I believe that at some point they had a lifetime deal. That was one of the reasons that I got it. Um, but I don't know what it looks like now. Have, have you browsed to that site, Cameron? Are they still offering affordable pricing? I haven't. No. I will... I have to have a look. And, yeah. Nathan, and Nathan, you mentioned Sunday. Isn't there something special happening next Monday? I wonder what that is. Oh, Monday. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I could honestly, Rob, I could, I could go on about it, but uh, I feel, <laughs> I feel, um, I, I, I don't know. I just don't want to keep going on about it. You know, I, I think I, I, I like to. I like can to anybody hear me? Soccer. No. Yeah, we can hear you, Bud. You're we back. can hear you. Fine. Oh, you can. can can you hear us? Fine, finally. Yay. Okay, yep, real good. Yeah. We got there. Okay. Yeah, well, well done. <laughs> Can well we start done. all over again? All right, take two. Start all over again. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'll just begin again. Uh, yeah, page one I, I... summit. Well, uh, don't know anything about that really, but uh, yeah. Uh, so we're currently talking about uh, which RSS readers we use. So what about you, Cameron? Ah. What are you using? Uh, just a Slack uh, channel. So you oh, can you set up an RSS yeah, how um, that work, integration. Though? What do you, what do yeah. you mean? So um, every time someone publishes something to an RSS feed, Slack scans it periodically. And then if there's a new thing, it pings me a message says new article. Yep. Right. That's kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, so it's, I, yeah. it's, I've only got a few on there. Like the Tavern's one of them. There's a couple others um, in the WordPress space that I look at. And yeah, so I just get, Slack messages periodically. It's not like you, there's no sorting or filtering or anything, but yeah, it's just like, oh, new news from so-and-so. Let's yeah. see if that's interesting. I don't yeah. read everything, but I've got a little bit of an idea of what's going on, even if I just see the headline. So. One, of my, um, one of my rules of thumb is if an article begins with a number, I don't read it. 
um, you know, <laughs> because it's like ten of the best things that you can do, or or five things you should One do tomorrow. One week until to... the Page Builder Summit. Let's try that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I'd write the word one. Uh, so if it begins with a number, I generally don't read it because I'm constantly trying to figure out certain ways to get through it. Um, Courtney said we should share our RSS. Our, it's hard to say. RSS OPML feeds. Yeah, I do a bit of deduplication. De yeah, mine's not as big as it once was, Courtney. There were a few. There were, I, I once was signed up to literally hundreds of things, and some of them rarely publish anything. or They've gone out of existence. But I'm happy to do that if you want to. I don't know what my platform, sumi.news, I don't know what kind of an export option it's got, but uh, we can explore that. That would be fun. And then Marcus I, says, I'm "I actually still... pull." I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. Um, I'm I'll just finish. Make, I'm trying to make it for I'll... lost time. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Uh, let me finish what Marcus said, and then I'll drop <laughs> sure, you. In. Sure. Um, I'm still in yeah. Feedly land. Yeah, great platform. Closest experience to Google Reader. I can I I'm still happy to pay for it. Yeah. Is that what you're using, Rob? Yeah, I'm. I'm in Feedly, Marcus. Uh, despite being a Raptor fan, I agree with this. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Bod, what about you then? All right. I just before I answer that, I just want to correct the record when you introduced me. I'm not American. I'm European. Uh, are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. No, I, I live in the United States, but I'm European oh, nice. by okay. nature. Anyway, uh, I don't currently use one, but what I do use is I like to pull feeds from other uh, sources. And Nathan, you're one of the ones I pull. And I think Rob, I think I do you too. So on my Joy of WP site, there are I, what I'm doing is aggregating what I think is the best WordPress news information, whatever. I love doing that. I think it's a lot of fun. I use the RSS aggregator pro plugin and it's really interesting and easy to use. So oh, I see. So I'm that so rather than end. a rather than it being a, a a UI for you to use privately, yeah, it will consume it yeah. and then it will publish on your own. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Okay. Oh yeah, on my own site. And if I want to go read current information, I just go to my site and yeah. read current information. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Nice plug for the yeah. what was it? RSS aggregator. RSS thing. aggregator pro. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Maybe yeah, I should do that. No, yeah. I think probably my weekly news thing is probably as much as I need to be doing. It keeps me busy. I typically do it on a Friday. It consumes most of my Friday morning just deciding about what it is that we're going to talk about. So sometimes things get quite stale if they come out like Friday afternoon. I do them like a whole week later. But yeah, there we go. Feedly seems to be the uh, the one of choice between the, th between the four of us and Marcus there. It's definitely good. Worth checking out. But bravo, Sarah. Getting back to that. Bravo, Sarah, for managing to continue working in the WordPress space yeah. for 10 years. Incredible. Yeah. Okay. There's an event coming up. It's called the WordPress Accessibility Day. Um, you may have heard of another event, uh, which is also happening fairly soon. The Page Builder Summit is happening first, and the WordPress <laughs> Accessibility Day is happening a little bit later. This is 24 hours um, of global inspirational live streaming freeness. Um, and the registration is open. So go to 2023.wpaccessibility.day, fabulous URL, um, and you can sign up, get involved, and there's all sorts of information on the website about who's participating nice. and how you can donate and sponsors and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, what are the dates, though? That's the thing. There we go. The week after our summit finishes, 27th to the 28th of September. Okay, anybody want to chip in on that one? I doubt it. So should we just crack on? Yep. Yep. Okie doke. Ooh. Uh, I am a big lover of Mastodon. Uh, and one actually, Mastodon uh, comes along with a nice set of RSS feeds as default, a bit like WordPress does. And I just wanted to point this article out. I feel like Mastodon had loads of hype a little yeah, while ago. My my interest in it hasn't waned at all. I'm still using it just as much, but it kind of feels like there was this doom and gloom apocalypse um, thought in the Mastodon community that it was going to have this inexorable rise and Twitter was going to decline. I kind of feel like in the in the last six months or so that has firmly stopped. It feels like everybody is still carrying on with Twitter just as normal. Those whole yes. accounts being closed, protesting about what was going on, you know, politics and all that kind of stuff seems to have gone away. But I'm still loving it. 
uh, we've got a we've got a dedicated Mastodon instance. It's at wpbuilds.social. If you find if you fancy signing up, feel free to do that. Um, but this is uh, an article over on Talk.io, and it's all about uh, how you can use WordPress and Mastodon together. It's got some really nice little tips and tricks. If you're just starting out, ways that you can sort of promote Mastodon over your other social channels, ways that you can verify yourself. Uh, essentially, it's a 101 in how to make your WordPress website behave um, in a way that promotes your Mastodon over your Twitter. So I, pr I like that. That's my kind of thing. Anybody still chugging away with Twitter over there? I know that I am still using it in broadcast mode. I, I am actually because I'm a big believer you have to decide where your audience is and where your clients are. And I'll be really frank, Mastodon's nice for developers, but my audience, my clients, my potential clients are all on Twitter and LinkedIn. So that's yep. kind of where I spend my time. Your uh, your the LinkedIn group that you moderate is yep. is enormous, isn't it? It's like what is it like t nine thousand WordPress it's or something? Over ten thousand now. Wow, wow, that's pretty with, immense. Good job for with, curating with Courtney, that. With Courtney Robertson, actually, give yeah. Courtney her clue. She's a big help. So, do you have to do a lot of moderation over there? Does it get a bit like inflamed at times, mm -hmm. or is it fairly polite and easy to manage? Um, all the posts are moderated, so every time somebody tries to post to the group, we vet them before we we post them to get rid of spam, get rid of Fiverr links, get rid of self-promotion. That's all not allowed. So every post is moderated before it goes up. Interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. I've, um, I've, I've definitely carried on using social media, but I am without a doubt in broadcast mode now. I, I, in fact, I think I posted a tweet, ironically, saying that I, I really don't understand, and I've given up trying to understand how to how to reply on these platforms because I, I just I, my heart's not really in it so i've decided that i'm gonna use it more or less as a one-way streaming service for me and it's just you know if people want to stay in touch with the stuff that we do then that's the way that i'm gonna do it and and that seems yeah eminently sensible for me i'm still going to carry on using mastodon a lot i'll probably carry on using twitter and all the other platforms but it'd be a kind of one-way street i think but the, the politics of Twitter don't seem to have dented its use at all. So, you know, I'm sure it'll be here for... Well, it's not Twitter anymore. It, what is it? X, isn't it? X. X. But the problem with leaving Twitter is that after you've spent so much time building up some kind of following or visibility, you're going to lose all that. I mean, yeah. I, I can't do that. It's, I mean, it's yeah. like I'm about to get to a milestone of followers. I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to leave. Yeah. So, so my um stuck. my my position is I'm not really going to leave, but I'm just going to stop um uh, it, using it <laughs> as a messaging service, really, and that's right. kind of all I ever right. did. So I may use it just as an inbox, but it's not going to be. I'm I don't know. I just I just find myself less and less interested uh, by social media as the as the days and weeks yeah. go on. But Mastodon I find just to be a bit of a change. So here it is, Talkmag.io. Uh, go check it out. Cameron, anything to add? Or should we move on? Um, not really to Mastodon. I know I'm on the WP Builds Mastodon instance, but I don't use it. Um, yeah. It's the WordPress of... community is the only reason I joined Twitter. So yeah. like, I didn't, yeah. I, I thought the whole, the way it worked was a bit silly to start with. I thought it was just a celebrity thing. But yeah. it turns out that's where the WordPress community is. And there have been, you know, a decent number of people who've left since the elongated muskrat has taken over, but um, <laughs> he, uh, like, I think WordPress <laughs> community is still active enough, you know. So there's there seems to be you know a, a number of decent conversations that are still going on there, and yeah, I, I'm still using it, not as much as I was, you know, previously, but I'm not using it as much as I was before COVID either, so. I, I don't think anything's about to change. I think it'll still be. I would like to used. see threads, you know, take over that space, but that would take a long time. Yeah. Then there's throw into the mix all the other incumbent platforms like Blue Sky mm -hmm. and all of that, and it gets gets a bit messy. Actually, recently on my podcast, Rob, I don't know if this is of interest to you, but I've been asking people rather than replying on social media, I've been asking people specifically to go to the website, to go to our website and leave a comment there. And, you know, I just say something like search for episode 342 
and go there because I, I, I don't know. It's just one of those things. WordPress has got all that stuff built in. And yep. so encouraging people to come and comment on the website. But of course, taking people from an audio channel to a website is nigh on impossible. If, if I was doing something, I don't know, uh, on a web page and then asking people to comment, that's slightly different. But I think a lot of people consume podcasts in their, I don't know, in their car, when they're mm-hmm. out doing a jog or something, you know, they've got the iPod on or whatever. iPod, woo, check me out from the 90s. 90s. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, and so the idea of, oh, I'll make a comment on that is, I think I'm probably... Um, but it's it's job. really it's really interesting you mentioned that like 10 years ago or 12 years ago if you put a post on your blog or a podcast on your website you'd get 20 or 30 comments without even hesitating and now all the commenting takes place on social and i've gone to the point where i've actually turned off all the commenting on my websites on clients websites because what I find ends up happening is you're moderating more spam and more garbage than really valid comments. And I think all the valid good comments, I hate to say it, are happening on social. So yeah. it's a balancing act, right? So. I, I agree with you. I think I'm just trying to be a bit of a Luddite and I'm fighting a losing battle, but I'm, I'm going to just see so. how it works. I only started saying it about two weeks ago, so I'm interested if I keep I keep yeah. saying it. I wonder if at some point there'll be some sort of change in momentum where people will, will do that. But um, uh, Peter's saying he's presenting at the Accessibility Day. Oh, nice. Is he presenting a talk or is he presenting the weather? <laughs> oh, or That'd both. Be great if he did turn up with some of those little weather icons from the. You remember when they did the weather and they had magnetic, like little icons for clouds and things? They'd actually stick them on. There was this hysterical <laughs> session in the UK. So there was a map of the UK and it obviously was a big magnet and they had the clouds and whatever and they'd throw them on and move them around. There was this one episode where, for reasons completely unknown, none of them stuck. So the, the presenter spent the entire time just pushing things on and like holding them on with his finger. And then when he wanted to talk about a different part of the country, he had to put another one on and hold on. It was actually really funny. Uh, but yes, Peter, what are you doing? He says he's doing both. <laughs> oh, nice, 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 nice. Um, Courtney says, I'm on everything because WordPresses are everywhere. Yeah, I've noticed that, Courtney, and I've noticed that you managed to keep that, <laughs> you managed to keep those plates spinning. And I think that's one of the problems that I find is that I don't really have the mental capacity to keep those plates spinning. So mm. bravo to you for managing that. That's pretty impressive. Uh, she says, thanks for the shout out to you, Rob. Um oh, yeah. And she also says that she's going to focus on WordCamp attendees, where WordCamp attendees tend to be. Yeah, I, I do like your idea, Rob, of just picking one or two places and sticking to those where you know your yes. audience is going to be. Ah, oh, here we go. It's a live demo. Peter's back. How to build accessible yeah. posts and pages. Live demo. Nice. Awesome, Peter. Okay. do. Well done. Right. Let's Can I make on. a quick little... A little statement to Rob's comment about commenting on blog posts. And that Mm. is, if you've noticed, it used to be on WP Tavern. People like me and others would comment on posts. Now there's nothing. So whenever they write a new post to WP Tavern, there's no commenting to it, which is really interesting. I am going to, I'm going to pull up, I'm not going to put it on the screen, but I am going to pull up the WP Tavern admin area. And I'm going to put the posts up. Hang on. Let me log in. Log in with username and password. You don't want to share that, Nathan? No. I'm not going to show it. <laughs> What's the password, show it. But I am going to disagree with Bod because um, okay. I can see here. I, this is really a tough day. You know, you're making this really tough. Yeah, yeah. First, so, nothing, so, audio doesn't work. Now you're going to disagree. Yeah, so there was two, two comments on the ACF piece. There were three comments on the Gutenberg 16.6. This there were 12 you. comments on the GoDaddy piece before that. So I'm just doing them in chronological order. This is the number of comments. 2, 3, 12, 2, 1, <laughs> 12, 8, 8, 10, 19, wow. 1, 1, 2, 2, and then the page runs out. Uh, so there wasn't every post had comments yeah. so i don't know what you're seeing there i think i think it's the exception it did used to be busier i think though. yeah oh without a doubt everything used to be busier though didn't it just as yeah just as rob described i think i'm flogging a dead horse 
Uh, yeah, the, the other thing we got to watch with commenting is it's really interesting. People, you can always tell the people that comment based on the headline and they haven't read the post or listened to the podcast because it drives me nuts. News articles are like that, right? People read the headline and then they think they're an expert. So we're we're creating a whole pile of people on social who don't read actually. And it's it's like insane. And that's a problem too. So like if people are gonna comment, they should at least give the author the courtesy of writing reading the article and then deducing their opinion. Right. Yeah, I think the I think the interest in managing comments became so tedious mm -hmm. during the time when the spam started to ramp up. Now I don't yeah. know. If WordPress out of the box does a better job, but I I tend I think I've got turn style yes I've got I have turn style, style turned on uh, on yeah, the too. sort of automatic turn style turned on on the post for WP Tavern so it's doing some voodoo in the background to check whether you're real or not but I yeah. think if you turned that off it would just be a deluge of nonsense wouldn't it you know hundreds of comments to sift through every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them have absolutely no interest, and so it's very difficult to to decide. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, there we go. Right, let's raise the screen again. Here's a different piece. This is on WordPress.org. This is Javier Casares. Um, he says, Hola, WordPress features um, an extensive array of documentation, but it's primarily <coughs> available in English. Um, this is a proposal. It was penned on the 6th of September for documentation um, to be more widely translated. Now, as with many things on in the WordPress project, this is something which is um, not finalized. It's, uh, it's being discussed, but this strikes me as a truly important project, largely because, and uh, Javier makes the point, that there's a significant proportion of the WordPress ecosystem, which is, and, and when I say that, I mean WordPress installations, more than half are not in English. I'm kind of surprised that anything approaching half is in English, to be honest, but there you go. More than half are not in English, but the, the documentation for how to use WordPress, extend WordPress, all of that, uh, is broadly speaking in English. And so the, the objective is to create a, I'm going to read, our goal, quoting, our goal is to translate and sustainably maintain all the documentation in the world's primary languages um, with full room for expansion. In the initial phase, we will focus on translating documentation tailored for end users, advanced users and developers. Subsequent stages will include additional resources such as Learn WordPress, team handbooks, and other related materials. And then the article goes on to explain how they're hoping to do this. Uh, they're going to have the team set out into three different hierarchies, translators, general translation editors, and repository maintainers. And yeah, the, it, this is quite important as well. Glotpress, the WordPress built-in translation system, will not be used in this initiative to allow for greater flexibility. Instead, I can't remember how it's going to be done, to be honest. I've, I've actually forgotten now. But anyway, the point is, um, this is now going to be taking place. I suspect that they are... Oh, that's right. It's going to be done inside of a GitHub repo. Yeah, I remember now. Um, the, the the challenge is big. There's an awful lot of work to do. They've obviously cherry-picked what they're going to do first. But uh, as a native English speaker and basically somebody that only speaks English, I, I kind of often feel like, like my head is firmly buried in the sand on this issue. But it must be blooming frustrating if you're from somewhere else in the world and you're banging your head through Google Translate to try and understand how to use the software which is freely available and, well, democratizing publishing. So good project. Over to you on your thoughts. Should we start with, I don't know, Cameron, got any thoughts on this? Um, yeah, I think it can only be a good thing. Um, not that it's not going to be hard because it's not, it's not just a case of getting people who know that language. It's you need people who are bilingual. Um, which is, you know, an even smaller percentage of people than, you know, that just speak your target language. So, yeah, can't, it won't be the easiest thing in the world to achieve, I don't think. But, yeah, I reckon it'll be a good thing overall. Um, yeah, I I got an email just the other day from Air France because um, 
yeah, I'm taking a plane out of France in a couple of days. And it's just like, I can't read this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Google Translate it was. Um, yeah, so you can get by with it, but it'd be so much easier if it's just in your native language. So, yeah, it can only be a good thing. Uh, Courtney says, for the translation proposal, we brainstormed things such as at a block level, notifying translators, better collaboration across learn, etc. Thank you for that, Courtney. That's really helpful. Uh, Rob or Bod, anything to add on this translating sure. WordPress? Sure. Um, I agree with Cameron. You need somebody bilingual to translate it. It would be nice if we could get it in all these languages. Like it would be, it would increase WordPress's reach. Um, Google Translate is kind of our friend right now. And uh, I find it, I'm, uh, my partner's Italian and I'm learning Italian. And so, you know, I'm, for, I'm, I'm forever using Google Translate to translate words when we're out and about or if somebody doesn't do it for me. So, you know, it, it's learning a new language is an interesting problem and uh, and it's hard. And to expect it just to happen is asking for a lot, really. I can Listen. I can imagine that this I mean, we're just sort of glibly talking about this, but this truly is a massive massive undertaking isn't it and in order to try and streamline that process they did make some they've obviously had to make some concessions a they've decided to go through uh, github which is probably from a developer's point of view it makes perfect sense because mm -hmm. where everybody's at and you know they all understand it but also they're not going to distinguish for example spanish from spain and spanish from mexico at this point it's just going to be spanish i don't quite know which spanish that means presumably Spanish, Spanish, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and the same for where you are, Rob. That they're not going to say the difference between French, yeah. French from France and French from Canada. It's just going to be French. And here's the breakdown of the stats. It's kind of interesting. So of the all the WordPress installations out there, here's the approximation. Uh, English, massive domination, 48%. Uh, uh, Germany or German, I should say, 6%. Spanish, 7%. I had kind of expected that number to be significantly higher. Uh, French, 5%. Italian, 4 Japanese, 6 hmm. Portuguese, 5 And again, I don't know why. I just thought that would be bigger. And Russian, 3 And presumably then there's a whole bunch of other languages in the ones and the halves and what have you. But yeah, important so, work. Very interesting that because hmm. I, I think... I think the Japanese distribution of installations is closer to 20%. Right. And obviously Mandarin is the most spoken language globally from what I'm aware. And that's not even on there. So yeah, it's interesting to look at the, those numbers. I do wonder if the, the fact that all the documentation is in English and, um, you know, you attend WordPress events and things like that, and the presentations are usually carried out in English. I do wonder if the default is, even for people in these other parts of the world, is just to flip it over to some kind of variation of English. Then at least you've got those those standard terms, you know, posts and pages. I actually have no idea what they look like in uh, in different Nathan, languages. Yeah, I wanted to throw out there. Speaking of languages and the change in the community, our our mutual friend Bob Dunn over at do the woo bob's now doing some podcasts in other languages that aren't natively english and i think that's really interesting on bob's perspective to recognize that the community is more than just all us english speakers and i i want to throw kudos out to bob for doing that you've you've disobeyed the one unwritten law of this podcast and it's never to mention bob oh he's not here <laughs> I don't oh, know. I, I don't know what you were thinking, Rob. Honestly, <laughs> no, I, I love Bob. No, you're right. thinking about the page builder summit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking about that? the page builder summit, <laughs> which, by the way, uh, which by the way is happening next week. Um, no, I love Bob, and that was a truly. Actually, we talked about that a, a week yeah. or a couple of weeks ago. I thought that was actually fairly inspired for him to just yeah. surrender his. I know that he has many co-hosts and things like that for him, but but for him to surrender his podcast over to to have it in an entirely different language. I think that's, I think that was really, really quite something special. So yeah. He, bravo. he is a leader in this community for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. yeah indeed. Indeed. 
Uh, we've got more chat coming in. Michelle says, never mentioned, but oh, okay, yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is going to be another thing, isn't it? We're going to never be allowed to. That'll be the title that. of the show. That's, yeah, okay. I'm going to write that down quickly. Unless he's speaking at a certain summit on Monday. No, 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 no. I wouldn't have allowed that. <laughs> honestly i'm gonna get slayed uh i love you bob you're so you're my favorite <laughs> just digging myself out of the hole you need to get a bob head like he's got his yes head. that's <laughs> like to, like to West you imagine? Coast. oh he sent me a picture of that head which he never posted on social media but there was a there's a picture of it in a toilet <laughs> No, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, flushed or pre-flushed? I don't know, but it was quite kind of funny. Right, moving on. We still got loads to get through. So uh, Leslie Sim, who has the newsletter glue plugin, um, she has decided that she's going to begin her podcasting journey. And as of this moment, she's got three episodes out, including a season one trailer. So two. Um, real episodes, if you like. I confess, sorry, Leslie, I have not had the opportunity to, to listen to it yet. But um, yeah, the podcast is, it's all about newsletters, believe it or not. So the strap line is here, the, here from the best newsletter operators in the business on how to monetize, grow and run your newsletter. We, I use it actually to create the posts for this, but we're, we're not trying to sort of monetize that as such. But I know that there is a whole industry of turning your content into a newsletter and then trying to, you know, monetize that. I subscribe to a few, actually. There's this one in the UK called Jack's Flight Club. You pay a fairly small amount and then Jack goes off and finds loads of cheap flights and publishes them in his newsletter. And, uh, and it's absolutely brilliant. So I know that there are definitely ways for people to make money out of this. And, and Leslie is in, the, uh, is in the business of airing those voices. She had one on the 28th, 29th of August, Mastering Deliverability uh, with Ali uh, Alisa Doolin or Doolin, I don't know. And then Going Viral with, going viral, sorry, with Thought Leadership with Cedric Chin. So you can find that brilliant URL. The podcast is called Sticky. And she has got the URL sticky.fm. Cameron, was it you? Did you say you'd listen to a couple of, or one of them or something? Yeah, I've listened to both the episodes that have come out. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. So, nice. Yeah, good job. And it's good to hear from um, some voices that I haven't heard of before. So yeah. like the two <laughs> interviewees are not people I was familiar with before. Um, but yeah, it's been good. Like I've learned a few things about how email systems work. So, like I think it was the first one um Alyssa works for or worked for or worked with um like email deliver like email delivery platforms so mm -hmm. it was really interesting to hear a bit of what happens on that side of things so yeah I really enjoyed it would would definitely recommend it those platforms Congrats. must be constantly banging their head against yeah. like deliverability problems because yeah. you know they onboard some new user who then just spams <laughs> spams their platform for a while yeah. sorry interrupted whoever that was no, no worries. I just want to say congratulations to Leslie. It's a, as Nathan and I will attest to, podcasting's a labor of love and a lot of work. And uh, well done for jumping in. Yeah, nice. Uh, Bod, anything? Do you know Leslie? Uh oh. Oh, I think he's got <laughs> muted again. Bod, you got muted again. Check the wires. <laughs> Pull out the cable. Switch. Turn it off. Turn it on again. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what to say. We'll we'll move on, Bod. What I'm going to say is refresh your browser. Let's just begin that process again. We'll carry on in the meantime, and um, and hopefully we can get you back in on that. Okay. Occasionally we have some news stories which are just blooming annoying. This is blooming annoying. Uh, I wish I didn't have to do pieces like this, but I think it's probably important to raise awareness about it. So this is on a website called Binary Moon. .co.uk, and it's all about something called Festinger Vault. I actually feel like I could throw this over to you, Cameron. I don't know if you want to run with this or you want me to go through it, but if you want to run with it, because I know you've been involved in this. Uh, yeah, sure, if you want me to. Yeah, go, why not? the host, not? then yeah. sure. Uh, this is my show now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so what happened uh, last week was they... Well, the, to start off, the Festinger Vault is a GPL club and you pay them a fee and you get access to 
thousands of premium WordPress themes and plugins that they have bought and then they try to monetize selling them for cheap. I think this one's just a, just a membership fee that you pay a, every year and you get access to all of them, something like that. Um, yeah, so while it's legal, it's a scummy business practice to start with. Um, and so they scraped a bunch of emails from somewhere and just created accounts for everyone. Yeah. And like they did this with one of my emails like six months ago. And I didn't say anything at the time because it's like, I'm just going to keep quiet and keep an eye on it and see if, you know, my stuff ends up on there. Um, yeah. And then they did it again last week and got another one of my emails. Um, and at the same time, the email that was added six months ago got a newsletter blast saying, please leave us a review, which was hilarious. Um, yeah. And it seems like this recent thing was thousands, maybe more of email addresses. Um, cause yeah, there's been lots of reviews complaining, lots of people on Twitter complaining. Um, yeah, nice and fun. Um, yeah, so it's a, they're not a, oh, what's the word? It's not a very ethical business to start with. And then when you're doing unethical things like scraping people's email addresses and automatically adding them to your site, it's, uh, yeah, leaves an even bitter taste in your mouth. Um, yeah, the, the irony of, you know, adding someone like me who has premium products for sale to their site is just hilarious and goes to show just how brain dead the people behind this company are. Um, yeah, I, seeing as they've asked me for a review, I gave them one. Yeah, we've, and uh, we've got the, the review. They, actually. they claimed <laughs> that it wasn't actually them that created the accounts. It was some competitor trying to tarnish whatever reputation that they have. Um, I don't buy that for a second because they have been called out in the past for spamming with um, Discord and on forums and lots of things. And those were definitely coming from yep. their official yep. accounts. Yep. So I have no reason to believe that this was some competitor. Um, yeah, just scummy business doing scummy business things. I think you've explained that really well. And uh, I, I presume that over on Trustpilot, where they've asked you to review them, yeah, you, you only have a choice of one star. You can't go lower than one star. No, unfortunately. That's the, that's the available They, they tried to get that review taken down. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it says, where do I even start? I never signed up for an account. I never signed up for a newsletter. But if you're going to non-consensually spam me asking for reviews on multiple email addresses, well, a review you will get. I love it. Um, not only are they spamming, their entire business model is built on stealing from developers, asking me to review them when they proudly take advantage of people like me is not only infuriating, but also a demonstration of just what a shambles the business is. Festing a vault, more like festing a stain on the WordPress community. So do you have any insight into where your email addresses ended up? Have, have they created, do you suspect they've created a WordPress user in their account or is it yes. just been scraped into a, yes. like a third party email deliverers service? It's a WordPress user account. Oh. Yeah. Cause the, the first email you get is with a username and password and then so you get the newsletter after that. Um, some people are suggesting it might've come from GitHub that they've scraped through commit history or something like that. Um, the, like the first one that got added was my agency account that I work for. And like, I don't use that account on GitHub. Like that email is not public. So I'm not even sure where they got that from to but start they got with. It. Yeah, they, they did. Um, so yeah, maybe, you know, it's possible to guess it. I'm sure if you knew who I worked for, you could guess what my email is, but right. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's in the, in the realms it's... of plausible, but yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It... Yeah. It's a I'm weird sure one. They got it? it, but like it's, the whole, it's gross. The whole GPL thing is, is difficult to parse anyway. You know, I think we all mm. understand how that works. It's totally within the bounds of the law. But it's definitely, as you point. said, it's kind of a shady gray area, isn't it? It's hard to, yeah. hard to. They can share the code. Right. The thing is, copyright is exclusive from GPL, and trademarks are exclusive from GPL. So they yeah. can they can resell the code, but if they were to buy one of my plugins and list it on their site with my logo, I will be sending their host an email saying. Um, DMCA, please. They're using my branding to sell their products. Yeah, because that's illegal. 
And do you have do you have any in, intuition as to what they were even trying to do? So, okay, let's first of all make Brand the awareness. assumption, which I think is fair yes. enough, that that this was deliberate. Um, oh, they yeah. made the point. They replied to your email saying it wasn't them. It was somebody trying to besmirch yeah. their reputation, which uh, I don't. But believe. when when their official no. accounts have done similar things in the past, I yeah. find that very hard to believe. It, it's plausible, mm-hmm. but I don't buy it. Yeah. So I, I, but for the life of me, I can't figure out where the benefit to them comes from here. Brand I just awareness. don't see how this is ever. If, in what scenario is this going to work out well for them? If one person is given this automatic access to see what they have, and that you know they log in to see what it is, and they go, "Oh, this is cool. I'll pay you your twenty dollars or whatever to get access to all this," mm-hmm. then they've benefited out of it, right? Even if they've pissed off a hundred thousand other people. Got it. And then that one person tells five other friends who four jump mm-hmm. on there. And so it's that whole mess. Like companies like this need to be shut down. And I mean, shut down quickly because they're doing people like Cameron, people like me, a disservice. And it's a problem. And mm-hmm. I mean, not only is this scummy and bad business practice, it violates all the GDPR rules of that uh, violates all the Canadian spam rules. It violates and violates and violates. So let's forget our community. These are where governments need to be stepping in and issuing fines to spammers and saying, we're done here. And we've had a couple of fines in Canada issued that have been over a million dollars. So it's time. They, this one certainly fits that bill, Cameron, as far as I'm concerned. They should be fined fine millions. And if that puts them bankrupt, great. I'm, I'm all in. You know what I mean? Like, this is stupid. Um, yeah, so you can read this piece. Uh, right. As I said at the top, it's binarymoons.co.uk. Binary moon, singular, .co.uk. You can have a read there. Um, the person writing this article, I confess, I haven't grabbed their name. Um, they um, they I- illustrate everything that... Um, that Cameron just mentioned. Obviously, Cameron was <laughs> coincidentally uh, <laughs> socked up into the same mess this week and left his own comment. You can see the mm. the binary moon comment just there. Also, one star on Trustpilot. I think what he's trying to encourage people to do is actually to go to if you are if you have fallen foul of this, go to Trustpilot. Um, make an honest review. Don't write something for the sake of it. And then also he's saying um, use uh, go to Amazon SES, which appears at this point, at least anyway, to be their email provider. I tried to report them on Amazon SES and their form was broken. So, <laughs> What, the Amazon SES form yeah. was broken? Excellent. Oh, great. <laughs> I, I tried at least. I'm pretty sure there's an email you can forward their spam to as well. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, assuming that form comes back at some point in the future, if you link, if you click on the link in the show notes, you'll be able to see uh, where that is. But uh, yeah, Bod, are you back? Let's see. Can you, you hear me? Back. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. We got okay. you. Don't All touch right. anything. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I didn't touch anything before, <laughs> and it died. I have That's no so idea weird. what today is. Just so weird. Not my day. All right. Anything on this? I don't know if you managed to capture what we were talking about there. This festing of uh, it's not. It's yeah, I did, but it's not really something I pay much attention. I mean, maybe I should pay attention to, but yeah. No. Okay, that's okay. We'll move on. Um, all right. So the next piece then is this lovely project. This is WP Amazing. Includes. So uh, WP Includes dot me is the URL yeah, that we're going to be uh-huh. looking at, um, and it's entitled "A Women in WordPress Mentorship Scheme: Increasing the Repres- right. Representation of Women in WordPress Boardrooms and Leadership." Um, the people who have kickstarted this project yeah. are Siobhan McCowan and Francesca Morano. The idea is that, well, oh, yeah. exactly that. It's to promote the it, the intention is to get to 50% of female right. representation across the WordPress ecosystem in business, enterprise, agencies, and what have you. Uh, you can see the website on the screen, but if you're not looking at this and you're just um, listening to it, we've gone to the program link where they explain what it is that they're doing. And also there's a link explaining how you can become a mentee. There's mentees and mentors. Obviously, if you want to become a mentee, 
um, then you probably have, there's probably less expectation of what you've done in the past. Mentors, I imagine, will have to have a, a proven track record of, of what have you. So anyway, nice new uh, project, WP includes dot me. Uh, you can go there now and register your support, get involved and what have you. I think it was Rob, whilst I was introducing it, you said amazing. Was it you? Yeah, it was me. I think it's an amazing project uh, and trying to get more ladies involved in the WordPress in mentorship. I think that's really important. Um, I think inclusiveness is important. So I think it's a great project. Well done. Yeah, nice. Uh, I don't know how long it's been going. I feel because they're still looking for mentees and mentors, it's probably quite new. But um, anyway, you can go to that website and uh, check it out, if, especially if you've got a, a way to contribute to it. Uh, Bod, Cameron, anything, or should we move on? Uh, yeah, just that it's a really good initiative, I think. Um, you know, there's, um, with, with all the talk about uh, representation and gendered pay and all this sort of thing like the biggest discrepancy is women in leadership positions like you know there's mm. at least in the western world we've got um laws about pay discrimination and all this sort of thing now but um the the biggest thing is getting those women into those executive roles so i think it's really good um i do like i wonder if they have bigger plans for it as well because the name WP Includes is very broad, whereas yeah. their mission seems very yeah. specific at the moment. So I do wonder if they have even bigger goals that they're working on behind the scenes as well. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Just just a thought. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, I'll tell you what else is a is a good initiative. Just, uh, yeah. just, yeah, just saying. What is that? I don't I have, know. I that? don't know what that is, Bod. I think it's some summit going on next week. <laughs> there it is. I'm going to flash it on and off. Look at that. How exciting is that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like a little traffic light. Um, oh, Bod, anything before we move on? Well, you see more and more uh, initiatives like WP includes in the WordPress space, um, whether yeah. it's for supporting inclusion and in, support inclusion and technology. That one. I mean, there's more and more of these. Um, initiatives that deal with diversity and inclusion, accessibility. Um, and I think it's all good. I think we all need that. Um, so it's, I mean, it will only strengthen uh, the WordPress project in the community. All nice. these things. Yeah. One final time. WP includes dot me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I this is above my pay grade a little bit, but the next piece is is inspired by an interview that I did with a really very very nice chap uh, called Scott Kingsley Clark. Um, it was done for the WP Tavern, and Scott was talking to me. It was the interview probably took place about five weeks ago now. I don't know that anything massive has changed, but it's um, it's Scott trying to get the community excited about the the fields API. And broadly speaking, the field API was something that Scott was involved in many, many, many years ago. And for a variety of reasons, which he explains, uh, that project really didn't take off. The idea really is to make it so that there's a place in WordPress where all the developers can go. So, for example, if you want to, I don't know, create custom fields or custom post types, at the moment, you're you're either doing it yourself, in which case you're reinventing somebody else's wheel, or you might very well be, probably probably are, using a third-party solution, something like ACF or Metabox or Toolset or something like that. And they've, of course, got their own way of doing it. And so Scott's position is, wouldn't it be nice if there was a wordpress -y way of doing this? And then everybody can hook into the wordpress -y way. So a, be a obvious benefit of that is it would be available to all. If you were using one of the products that I just mentioned and you you found that you wanted to go elsewhere, hopefully that product would be able to marry in nicely and you could just port over. Uh, the reason it didn't take off in the past was, was for a lot of reasons. Some of them sort of personally ran out of steam and he ran out of energy to carry it on. But also he says that he did quite a lot of the work in isolation. He just got on with it and got his head down. And then when he finally showed everybody what he'd done, there was a kind of deluge of, well, that's not the way I would have done it. So I think he lost a bit of 
lost a bit of uh, chutzpah about carrying it on. Anyway, he's he's back, um, and he really does want this <laughs> to happen again, and he's really really keen. He's enthused again. You'll if you don't know anything about Scott, he's one of the one of the guys that is really behind the pods framework, so he knows what he's doing. Uh, he is possibly the the perfect person to take this on. So that was what that interview was about. And if you did listen to that and you, any of you three want to comment or you just have some thoughts about it, go for it. Well, but, um, yeah. I, I have an, uh, either a question or a comment or maybe both, which is, is this sort of a way to create a standardized way amongst, let's say, form builders to use a standard set of code to create what they do? Uh, I, and, and I'm also want to reference... There's a, a movement afoot amongst uh, learning management systems like, um, uh, what am I thinking of? LearnDash and others to create a, in, in that space, that is the LMS space, to create a standardized way of developing the stuff that they work on, which I find a little bit, I mean, it's, is that what this is about? <laughs> I guess that's uh, my question. Uh, C- Cameron, I've got a feeling that your intuitions on this will be better than mine because you're far more technical than I am. But if you if you don't want to take that, I can answer Bud with what I think. But Yeah, to an extent, yes. Um, mm-hmm. So WordPress has a lot of different settings stuff. You've got like settings pages for your options and whatever, and you've got um, right. post meta and that sort of thing. Um, and they're all handled differently. And they're all, you know, uh, like some of the things like they, the options pages in the WordPress admin out of the box are all hard coded. So yeah. Um, yeah. There's lots of um, inconsistencies and stuff. That's just, you know, it's technical debt from WordPress being around 20 years. Um, right. So yeah, like that would, it, you know, form builders and LMS systems, it w- would all be affected by it. Um, and it would make their lives easier. You know, the reason why we have products like ACF and pods and Metabox is right. because there is no fields API. And like, if you've noticed from like using those and using custom data for different types of content, like, you know, you've got your post meta, but then you've got users and taxonomies and it's all handled differently. Um, so yeah, it just the whole project is about standardizing it and, you know, giving a proper API for it that is standard and that sort of thing. Aside well, from I, the, aside, no, you, you carry on, Bob. Sorry, go on. Oh, just real quick. The the what I've learned about the um the LMS side of things is that one of the goals is if you if a user switches plugins, it'll be very easy to port import export the content without really yeah, <clears throat> it's not bad. Yeah, their courses, think. which is it's what? I don't think it's along those lines. It's more about the way WordPress stores and interprets the uh-huh. data rather I than see. the LMS systems themselves. Yeah, I think I, Courtney I think knows it, what you're talking about. Yeah, it, it would be an uh, the Fields API. I think that would be an well, not unexpected, but that would be a consequence that that would be possible. But it, it's not yeah, the intention. Right. It's to create a standardized way of. Uh, storing all this stuff so that, I don't know, if you use a data or comments or whatever it might be, wherever you are in mm. WordPress, you're using the exact same structure to to create that data. Right. And it kind of feels, it feels certainly from what Scott was saying, this this has been done elsewhere over and over again. And he talks a lot about the Drupal project, which I used to be a mm. massive fan of. I used to love using Drupal. And a lot of this has been handled over there for a very long time. They made that decision to do that hard work. Uh, presumably, the commitment of WordPress to be backwards compatible, compatible, really, to a very, very long time ago, means that this work hasn't been done. There's no expectation for, well, th- there's a, there was an expectation. Scott would like this work to be rolled into core, but he doesn't have any, he doesn't have any insight as to whether that would happen or not. But what he's trying to promote is if you've got any interest in this and you've got the chops, if you've built a way of handling um, custom fields and custom posts, if you've got experience with that, come and join him. Let's figure out with him what it is that's needed, how to do it, who the people are going to be responsible doing it. And uh, I, I can't see there, if it was done well, I can't see there being any downside 
uh, to this project at all. And Courtney, almost at the exact same time you asked that question, Bod, says the LMS standards would be about porting data from one LMS to the other or APIs on yeah. student results. Yeah. So that, that I think is slightly different. Yeah. Yeah. Rob, anything? No, I'm good. You're good. Uh, yeah. But anyway, go and have a listen. Uh, you'll, you'll just come away with a really nice impression of uh, Scott as much as anything else. It's very calm, polite. He's obviously had a few setbacks in his endeavors and he's still, still coming back <laughs> uh, for more time. So bravo. I, I think it's more important than the Gutenberg project, just to be honest in my Yeah, opinion. go on. You you said that to me in the in the pre preamble before we yeah. hit record. Should have, should have had this in core 10 years ago. So that should have come first. It, it, it is the bedrock of something mm. like a complex CMS, really, isn't yeah. it, I guess? Yeah. 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 Okay. Interesting. Mm. Uh, okay. So go and check the podcast out and see what you think. A couple of things. Well, one, actually, about, pod, uh, about products in the WordPress space. I haven't used this, but there is a plugin called Presto Player, which you can use to, um, I think it's a like a skin on top of videos. So whether that's hosted on uh, YouTube or your own hosting, whatever it may be, it creates a sort of more engaging um, skin for that. They've introduced a an update this week. They've added playlists. So rather than a traditional uh, player, which you might normally see, you know, the, the usual rectangle with a play button and a slider to drag to where you want in the video and a few buttons, it adds a little window to the right-hand side of that, which shows a playlist of episodes. So, for example, uh, that could be really, really useful for something like, oh, I don't know, the Page Builder Summit, as an example. We could, uh, what we could do there is we could put all of our um, presentation. I'm loving this. We could put all of our presentations into one <laughs> playlist for the uh, the Page Builder Summit version six, which is what's coming up next week, 18th to the 22nd of September, 2023, pagebuildersummit.com. Um, and you'd be able to see them all in one podcast place. So you wouldn't have to be constantly clicking on links and going elsewhere. So I just think that's kind of a nice. A nice thing. I've not seen that elsewhere. I'm sure it's probably been deployed somewhere else. But anything on that product? <laughs> there was quite a lot of advertising in there. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, I think it would work very well with the Page Builder Summit. Just it would. It, honestly, I think we, we that <laughs> would be <laughs> genuinely that would be an act, actual perfect use case. If you've let's say you've paid yes. for the the upgrade. <laughs> Uh, at the moment, you have to you have to log into a variety of different things to you have to you know you have to go to different pages to see. And if all the presentations were in one playlist, kind of nice. That's a good idea. Anyway, it's called Presto Player, and uh, it's on version two. Version two, That's you cool. can download now. Yeah, very nice. Okay, performant translations. Right, getting in the weeds a little bit here. Again, maybe going a bit above my pay grade, but here we go. Uh, the core performance team recently conducted, this was a few weeks ago now, an analysis, and it showed that if you are doing translations on your WordPress website, there is a, a quite a slowdown uh, in the way that WordPress implements it. So in order to combat that, this has happened really quickly, I feel. The performance translations plugin has been created. And what it does is it hijacks the way that your WordPress site does translations. At the moment, let's say you want French, you need a, an, an equivalent .mo file for your French translations. This seems to, if I've got it, if I've understood it correctly, this gets rid of that and um, uses PHP instead, which can be cached and all sorts of other things. It's much faster for the, the server to parse it. And it's, it's basically ready to go. What they're saying is it's kind of beta, not beta. It's kind of not ready, but ready. So they're saying, we think it's good enough to be um, actually used on production websites, but maybe don't take that as read. Do some testing of your own. Down, I don't know, download something like they're suggesting here, query monitor, carry out some tests of your own, see if it works. But uh, this is one of those things which happened really much more quickly than I expected. I thought it was going to be like a news item which got buried and never surfaced again. But here we are. So if you are translating, I cannot see the downside in trying this out. If you've got translations, this purports to be a install, set it and forget it. That's all you do. You just install the plugin, activate it, and you're good to go. 
And it says that if things don't turn out and in the way that you'd hope, love this, um, it says it will remove all traces of itself upon an, on installing. How many times have I wanted to see that sentence? Should you wish to, te to stop testing the performance translation plugin, I'm quoting, on installing it will remove all of its traces. Bravo. So again, anything for that? We're very close to the end, so I'm probably just going to rush through some things quickly. Okay, I wanted to mention that WooCommerce Blocks uh, 11 has added a product collection block. I don't think we're going to yep. have too much time for that unless one of you wanted to jump in on that one. Nope. Okay. I'll mention it in the show notes. Uh, you, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Britain. Lovely Britain. Um, Britain decided that, uh, that encryption was uh, something that you could have, you know, you have your cake and eat it. You can fully encrypt things, but the British government says, can we have things encrypted like really well, but not quite well enough so that we can get into them? And the tech companies for a long time said, no, that's not how it works. And so they said, well, you can build how it works. And the tech company said, no, we no. can't build it. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. And the tech com and then the British government said, go on, please, pretty please redesign of all of cryptography so that we can access it. Go yeah. on. And eventually they've given in by the sounds of it. So Signal, you can stay here. WhatsApp, you can stay here. All these other platforms, apparently you can now stay here. And uh, and this, I've understood, is the reason that Cameron's leaving in protest against... Uh, <laughs> against the oh, I would have been leaving if they didn't you turn <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's what they threatened to do Apple with their <laughs> iMessage product and Signal and a bunch yep. of others said well the simple solution is this if you enforce us to do this we just we won't take it we will just walk away from the UK and you can find your own encryption and uh, and so yeah interesting yeah so. I've, I've been following this even before I got over here but Me I've got too. a bit more bit more real-time updates having been here and uh yeah been really good to see them finally admit that they have stuffed up by trying to push this through um person on twitter slash x slash whatever yeah um heather burns oh yeah um, very good heather burns at yeah. web dev law yeah is really good has been giving like she's the main one i get this information from um she gives really good breakdowns on <laughs> Twitter about you know how all this has been playing out. So yeah, give her a follow if you wanna. She is see impressive. how this has turned out. If you go and see her yeah. live, she she no longer participates in the WordPress community for reasons we won't go into. But when she was doing WordCamps, she was a force of nature. She stood at that podium and it was like, you lot, listen to me, and you all did because yeah. Heather knew what was going on. And it, it was very, she was brilliant. She, she probably still is, but she doesn't get involved. Yeah, in I know she's been involved in some of like the hearings and stuff that have yep. been going on to, you know, dealing with this. Yep. So good to see that the UK government has come to their senses about one thing at least. Yeah, well, I don't think they had much choice. In the face of no, very didn't. clever it's, cryptographers. It's simply not possible to yeah, do exactly. it how they wanted <laughs> yeah. and not let anyone else have access. Well, the premise was <laughs> we need a back door. So build us a back door but only we must have it. And so the platform's contention was, well, if we build a back door, there's, there's now no a back anything. door. And at some yeah. point, somebody will discover the back door, in which case our whole product is meaningless. So we, we can't send it unencrypted to the government while it's being, you know, and simultaneously be encrypted sending as the message and still say it's encrypted because yeah. it's not. <laughs> yeah. I think it was one of those moments where MPs, uh, finally met people who actually were able to say, look, MPs, just calm down. You're just wrong. Stop talking now. And it was quite nice for that reason. It's like that Facebook um, court thing a couple of years ago where all the guys are like, so how do you make money with Facebook? It's like, <laughs> yeah, like, we do ads, sir. <laughs> we do ads, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you not notice, we have loads of ads. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Uh, GoDaddy have retired what was in the day that I started using the internet, really, the platform. Um, mm -hmm. Media Temple was a brand that was kind of the cool kid on the yeah. block. It was brilliant in its day. It was bought by GoDaddy. They finally decided to shutter that brand. It, it, essentially, that brand is non-existent anymore. My understanding is that all of the uh, 
the sites that were on it got moved over, but the I guess some of the branding was still lying around somewhere. But they've decided after 24 years to uh, to jettison that, so it is no more. We uh, we bid a sad farewell to Media Temple. We haven't got time for this, but Insider uh, features Yoast Devolk from Yoast Fame. Uh, talking all about AI and and this kind of like new problem that we face, where more or less everything that you put out on the internet now is being scraped by AI, so that yeah. it can replicate you and your way of doing it and all of the knowledge that you're putting out there. And and he's saying, shouldn't we have like a robots dot text for AI, which works, which has teeth. Um, my understanding is there is a hmm. robots.txt equivalent, but who knows whether that's being um, observed. You can use it for ChatGPT, hmm. OpenAI, but whether all the other um, LLMs are going to obey that, and you know how, how honest are these LLMs going to be, and so yeah, on. So it's, it's just for ChatGPT that yeah, and their associated yep. stuff, as far hmm. as I'm aware, like. OpenAI seem to be behaving ethically, from what I can see, when it comes to AI. But you, I wouldn't trust everyone. In no, well, and also, ethical. you know, the the ones that come around in the future. That who knows? You, or, they made the point that all you have to do is rename the robot for ChatGPT, mm. and all of a sudden, yeah. your your declaration yeah. to say "Don't scrape us" is gone. But it yeah. is interesting, you know, that the whole promise of the web was open. I'm going to put it out so that humans can enjoy it without any expectation that it would go beyond that. And now, of course, it's non-humans who are ingesting it, regurgitating it. And what they're saying is, particularly the likes of Google, Google is now... Oh, and ChatGPT, obviously, of course. These AIs are getting to the point where they're not consuming it so that they can point people to your website so that people will come and give you lovely traffic. They're consuming it so that they can answer the, quest, answer the question directly so that they never need to go to your website. Um, and that is a bit of an upset for the way that the web works. So, okay. You wanted to mention this, I think, Cameron, didn't you? Word Camp Whitley Bay uh, is happening uh, through some horrific, uh, I don't know what the word is, through some horrific bad planning. It conflicts with uh, another WordPress event, which is happening at the same time. This is Word Camp. Uh, Whitley Bay happening in the UK, very near Newcastle. Why, oh, yeah, lad, that was my Newcastle impression. Uh, we'll never do that again. But it conflicts with the Page Builder Summit. So, oh. you know, pick or choose. Yeah. Just saying, you know. <laughs> I guess I know. Uh, you're not going though, Cameron, are you? You're off. No. Oh. No, I I booked a lot of this trip like over a year ago, so I wasn't yep. aware it was on the horizon. You know, disappointed on a personal level that I can't get there. Um, and it is a fair way away. It's like six hours away. Yeah, so it's, the, um, it's not it's the... close, it's, but it's, it's so good to see events starting to come back again. Yeah. Um, you know, this is just, it's a single track, I believe, single day event. Yep. It's on a Monday, which is a bit weird compared yep. to most word camps from what I can tell. Yeah. Um, certainly ones I've been to have all been weekends. Yeah. But it's a word camp in the yep. UK. Honestly, it, I saw this. It's event. fantastic. Like yeah. it's been frustrating coming here to the UK, and like there has been no WordPress Brighton meetups, and there have been no WordPress London meetups. There was talk of a WordCamp London, and that's fallen through. Yeah, um, and like, yeah. and both of those were running before I got here, and then stopped once I got here. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm not. Which has been I'm frustrating. Not saying Although, there's a connection, Cameron. That is not oh, what I'm definitely saying. Definitely not a coincidence at all. Um, there's a connection. Yeah. Um, well, like the north side of England seems to be doing a bit better. Um, yep. like I've been going to the WordPress Leeds and WordPress Cambridge meetups online. Then they're, they're starting to, to try and get back in person by the end of this year, I believe, yeah, I both think, of those. I think Leeds is um, coming back hopefully this month, actually, I think. Yeah, I know they've yeah. done a couple coffee meetups with Tim Nash, I believe. Yep. Yep. Whether his face is still frozen or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they did like a weekend coffee event, didn't they? Mm. I think it is starting to come back. I think there's more and more interest. But this is the only WordCamp scheduled for 2023 in the UK. It's a very small one. Brand new. Who knew that Whitley Bay was going to feature? But there I it is. I actually know it's... where Whitley Bay is because yeah. um, 
I'm a fan of the show Vera, which is based around Newcastle. Okay. So Whitley Bay is a place that some of the episodes have uh, taken place. Which I is, shall uh, not do my Newcastle interesting. accent again. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. But yeah, check it out. It's kind of cool. Rob, we're really rushing now, but let's go for it. This is a good one. Kathy Zant. Well, this is sad. If you had a LastPass vault and it uh, and you stopped using LastPass, now you really do need to sit up and take notice because it looks like they are starting to be cracked open. Rob, yeah. tell us more. It's just um, now they've been cracked open and there's more um, Bitcoin mining going on. And then to add to it even more, they've confirmed that even if you were part of the breach last December, You've been breached. So anybody who's been using LastPass, if you haven't changed your passwords, you better change them like yesterday kind of deal. I'd yeah. be changing them all. Yeah. Yeah. It's circumstantial evidence, but the circumstantial evidence, it comes from Brian Krebs, um, who is yep. the man, really, uh, along with Bruce Schneier. Um, he He's basically draw, he's connected the dots, and he's pretty convinced through a mm -hmm. lot of tangential evidence that somebody has cracked open last pass vaults depending on the strength of your password it may take a little longer for them to get in but it does seem like people have stored the seed for their bitcoin accounts and obviously yep. if that was that's the kind of stuff you've been storing in there you need to deal with that quickly 35 million dollars worth of bitcoin has been stolen in oh. events connected to LastPass. so if you ever were using LastPass or you still are using LastPass, just change everything that matters um asap because the clock is definitely yes. ticking yeah yeah and this company let me add real quickly nathan they need to come clean really quickly and admit all this stuff and they refuse to come clean so that's a big red flag for me yeah i moved everything over to bitwarden and uh sorry. happy happy uh, using Argon 2 encryption over there. And uh, yep. my understanding is it's memory hard, so it's very, very difficult to imagine. Yeah, I moved happening. over to Bitwarden when LastPass changed their pricing model because it used yeah. to be free, yeah. and then they're like, you can only use one device for free. I was and gone. Like, well, I want it on my phone and on my laptop, so Bitwarden it was. And then this happened a little while after that, so... I'm hoping none of my stuff was in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I deleted everything from last pass that I migrated yeah. over. Nice bit of serendipity there. Yeah, mm. good job. Um, and the last one was this. I believe I've covered everything else. You wanted to mention this. This is uh, this is what Cameron. What are we looking at here? Uh, this is a summary of what happened at the community summit, which was just before WordCamp US. Um, where a bunch of important people got together and had important conversations, <laughs> apparently. I don't know. I wasn't there, so they mustn't have been that important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <nice. laughs> and they certainly weren't talking about the most important thing of all, which was the Page Builder Summit, but anyway. Uh, do you know what, Cameron? It's funny you should mention that because uh, there, that is a thing that is happening. <laughs> I'm going to make it just blink on and off like that for ages. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. That's great. Uh, but the, yeah. the interesting thing I wanted to mention was uh, specifically about <laughs> events. And they mentioned that, you know, one of the main discussions that they were having was about how do they bring back events? What format do they bring back events and yep. this sort of thing, which I'm really glad to hear is happening at least. Um, like I have opinions about how WordPress events should or shouldn't be run. Uh, you know, I think speakers should be paid at least something, whether it's uh, $50 or whether it's all expenses paid doesn't matter. They should be paid something, but that's just my opinion. It's not the way WordPress works, but my opinion. Um, and yeah, um, I don't think the WordPress community will ever get back to the pre-COVID levels, at least not in the next decade. That's, again, just my opinion. You know, the flagship events might have bigger attendances, but I think that'll be... Um, a symptom of it in the fact that there will be less local events. So more people are going to the, will go to the flagship events. Um, again, these are just my opinions, but yeah, I'm, it's good to hear that at least conversations are being had about how WordPress events can get back on their feet. Like yeah, in Australia, as I'm sure, you know, Nathan from your interview recently with Joe, Joe, Moon, is, lovely uh, Joe. yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Australian community has really struggled because, um, yeah, we yeah. don't have the population density of, say, Europe and the US, where, you know, the majority of WordPress things seem to be centered around. Um, like, you can't just, 
you know, I can't just go up to London if there was no Brighton meetups. I would have to get on a plane for several hours to get to the nearest community. So it's, yeah, it's very difficult for, um, you know, us in Australia. Um, yeah, things are, the groups have struggled and I know we're not the only place. Like, yeah, south of England, there doesn't seem to be anything at all. So, yeah, at, I'm just, I'm glad that conversations are happening at least. Yeah, that was a fabulous episode with Joe. She spelled out to me the obvious problems that you face there in in Australia, just around the yeah, the, just the size of the country and the fact that you know if something's not happening in Sydney, the next the next best thing might be Perth or you know the other way around. Yeah, and um, and it's a long way, long long way, and it does seem yeah. I hope that these events come back. I know that there's a lot of talk about changing them and making them slightly different in the future. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But thank you for raising that. That's it. That's all I've got. And we've overrun. I'm sorry about that. I do apologize for okay. using up your time in that Are way. Are you sure that's it, Nathan? Oh, well, we I mean, I can, well, well, now, uh, I don't like know how many you, times Nathan. I can do this joke. Rob's literally <laughs> about to saw his own legs off with uh, yes. like, Stop it, Nathan. Um, yeah, there it is. Page of Summit. I'll, I'll fade out with a video. But before then, we've got to do the hands. Yeah. Uh, Todd, <laughs> get him in the screen there. Yes, I, get him in the I screen. know about the hands. You got the hands. Yeah. Everybody's doing the hands. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. That is all we got time Thank for. You. We Thank might you guys. not be back next week because of the Page Builder Summit. Not. I'm actually mentioning <laughs> it in earnest there. Um, but Cameron, thank you so much for joining us. Rob, thank you so much for joining us. Bud, I'm sorry about the technical gremlins. I hope it hasn't put you off. We will have you back gladly. I hope I'm not going to be voted off the island. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, quick. we'll <laughs> take a vote. Uh, raise, raise both hands if you think. <laughs> the, the yeah. um, we will see you in a couple of weeks probably. So I'm going to fade out with a little bit of a, uh, you know, I don't know what this is. but here Why we not? See you in a bit. Thank you.